everyone. We are back talking about football. Football? That's right. We're talking about football. Just want to say again, congratulations to the Browns. Any given Sunday. And they finally did it. A lot of people looking at the schedule probably thought, eh, it's going to be Tyler Taylor versus a rookie quarterback. The Cleveland's Browns defense has been doing a little better than they did last year. So this could be a very winnable game. And they won without Tyrod Taylor. Did they win because of him getting hurt and Baker Mayfield going out there? That's up for debate. But yes, once again, congratulations to the Browns. Now, on to better teams. The Vikings tied. They didn't win. They didn't lose. They tied. But it's not like they tied against the Browns. They tied against the Packers, a playoff team. So, I mean, eh, how do you judge that? How do you weigh that? Like, how far does a team drop when they tie against a good team? Just like, how far does the team drop when they lose against a good team? If you lose against the Browns, that's one thing. If you lose against the 49ers, if you lose against the Jags, like, if you lose against a good team, like, how far do you drop? Thankfully, for the first four picks... I don't have to worry about that, because they're all undefeated. Like, this one I had to flip a coin for. But, Chiefs won it. Patrick Mahomes, 10 touchdowns. Record. That's a record. 10 touchdowns in the first two games, that is a record. Can he keep that up all season? Probably not, but... This week, he has the 49ers. The 49ers are a damn good team. It's not like the Chiefs did this against uh, the Browns or the Jets. No, they did this against... The Steelers. They beat the Steelers. Oh, wait. The Steelers are 0-1-1. But the Steelers are still a good team. They're, they're not, they may not be the great team that they used to be, but they're still a good team. It's not like the Chiefs beat the Jets one week, the Lions next week, the Browns next week. No, they, they're beating competent teams. Teams that are usually competent anyways. And they're beating them bad. Next... Number two, the Rams. Are they going to be the greatest show on turf? Maybe, maybe not, but I didn't. I thought maybe last year was going to be a fluke for them. But so far, not a fluke. So far, God, the pieces they got on offense and defense. Now, as part of this being, hi guys, we're in LA, we're in Hollywood, we're in California. Do you really want to be on the free agency list going, hmm? Do I go to Cleveland, where it's 40 degrees when it's nice out, cold, nothing to do? Or do I go to L.A.? I'm going to L.A. I might take a $2 million pay cut, but I'm going to L.A., baby. Location, location, location. Sometimes for the free agency list, that makes a huge difference. Speaking of a good location, number three, the Jags, Florida. All right, sure, you get hurricanes and you get Florida man eating your face, but... When hurricanes and Florida man aren't eating your face, Florida's gorgeous. And the Jags beat the Patriots. Just, if they had done that last year, they would have been in the Super Bowl. And Blake Bortles, holy hell, like, if Blake Bortles played like this every week, they could definitely be going to the Super Bowl. With that defense being the Jags' defense, like, holy hell, but Blake Bortles being able to step it up, who the hell would have thought they'd be saying that? They could very well be a player. Well, absolutely, they're going to be definitely. I call it now. They're making it short of injury. They're going to the playoffs. Definitely getting. You know what? I'd put five bucks on them making it to the AFC Championship game. Calling it now. Five bucks, AFC Championship game. Jags are going to be in it. A team that won't be making it to AFC Championship game, but could very well be making it to the NFC Championship game. Coming from out of fucking nowhere. The Buccaneers. Is it the O-line? Is it just Ryan Fitzpatrick is that good? I mean, the O-line can be a huge difference. Just ask Eli Manning. <laughs> ask a lot of teams that. Ask the Packers that. Because you know the Packers, they'd be doing a lot better right now if they had a competent O-line. You're probably thinking, well, dude, they're 1-1. One and one. It's not like they have a losing season. No, 1-0-1. It's not like they're losing no, they're not losing. But 
Aaron Rodgers is getting hit. Aaron Rodgers is getting hurt. They're, Deshaun Kaiser goes out there. They had to go to shotgun formation every play because the defense is back there before the ball is. So a competent O-line is a huge difference. Like It's just amazing to think how big a difference an O-line makes for a team. You get Tom Brady behind a crappy O-line, he's going to suck. Get any quarterback behind a crappy O-line where, oh, yeah, oh crap, here's the defense. So, with Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Buccaneers, Ryan Fitzpatrick is, is averaging over 400 yards a game. Is it Ryan Fitzpatrick? Is it the O-line? Is it the talent around him? Are they going to bench him when Jameis Winston's suspension is over? I was about, oh, man, that'd be one hell of a decision to make. Like, how do you make that choice? Do we bench the guy who's averaging 400 yards a game for the guy who's suspended, or do we keep him but keep our normal starter on the bench? Oh, man, that's going to be one hell of a choice to make. If it was me, I'd probably keep Fitzpatrick out there. And or if, unless something happens, keep Fitzpatrick out there. Next, number five, how far they have fallen, the Patriots. That one loss, but it was against the Jags. Like, how far do I make them fall? Do I make them fall to third? Well, no, because then the Jags would beat them or 2-0. and Would be fourth, like, nah, I can't have that. And it's like the Buccaneers, they've been explosive against the Saints. The Saints are a good team. Yeah, right, they, but then again, they struggled against the Browns. But the Browns' defense is better than they were last year. So it's like, all right, so how do you judge this? And it's like, ah. But the Patriots, number five. And then they got Josh Gordon. Like, is this a panic move? Or is this move of Josh Gordon is going to be double covered? That means Rob Gronkowski is going to be single covered. And he has a master of the whoop out the way. It's not easy. They only got to do whoop to one player instead of two players. How much better is Rob Gronkowski going to be? How much play better are the players around him going to be? Because if, case in point, they've done it before. Randy Moss. Randy Moss had a one of the worst years of his career with the Patriots. But everyone around him had a Hall of Fame career. Everyone around him had 10,000 yards, 100 touchdowns. <clears throat> All right, maybe not that good. But Wes Welker looked like a Hall of Famer that year. Because Wes Welker was always open. Because Wes Welker was always facing single coverage or no coverage. Because Randy Moss had double coverage, triple coverage, 10 coverage. <clears throat> Sorry. So, yes, yeah, so this is going to be a case of, yeah, Josh Gordon is going to have a crap tackle year of only getting two, three catches a game. But everyone around him is going to have 10 catches. Everyone around him is going to have 100 plus yards a game. Everyone around him is going to be a Hall of Famer. We'll have to wait and see. It might be this Sunday. Coming into the playbook this quickly, he may not be out there very much. But if he's a decoy getting double covered that's all he needs to be, be doing like he doesn't need to be out there making the one-handed fingertip grabbing the end zone for the win or he just out there as a decor getting double covered that may be all they need ah six through ten is fucking rough you have one and oh and one teams <laughs> you have one and one teams you have two and oh teams you have a two and oh team they actually have two of them that are 2-0. But you look at the games like, they barely beat this team by a point. Or, yeah, they won, but they won against teams that, no, they're not top five teams. So you go you go 2-0 and and you play against the Browns and the Lions. All right, congratulations, you went 2-0 against craptacular teams. But you go 1-1 one one against a Super Bowl team and then a playoff team. Like, uh, how do you judge that? So with number six... Not the Vikings, not yet. Go with the Bungles. They beat the Colts at Colts Stadium for the first time since 1997. Now, if the Colts had gone out and just crapped it out against the next team, it would be like, all right, the Bungles aren't that good. They just got a craptacular team. But then the Colts went out and they beat their team. They beat their opponent. So this is what moved the Bungles up this high for me. Will they keep this up? At this point, they could win their division. The Ravens are 1-1, one one, with the Bungles have a win over. The Steelers are 0-1-1. One one. The Browns are 1-1-1. One, one one. Like, the Bungles could win their division, for crying out loud. And oh, who they have this week? All right, they have this. They have, ooh, the Panthers. Panthers are 1-1, one one, but the Panthers played against good teams. So we're going to have to wait and see who can do it. 
the Bungles or the Panthers, I'm going to say, ooh, let's say it's at Panther Stadium. Ooh, AJ Green's been stepping it up. Calling it now. Bungles by less than a field goal. Next, Vikings. Vikings, thankfully, have a bye week this week. I mean, the Bills. But Dalvin Cook is hurt. And Everson Griffin is hurt. They're not playing. So one of the top pieces on offense, one of the top pieces on defense aren't going out there. But it's the Bills. So maybe the coach going, they could probably play if we really needed them. Nah, it's the Bills. Now watch this come back and bite them in the ass and they lose. But Vikings, they beat the 49ers, an undefeated team. The 49ers were, what, 5-0 with Jimmy Garoppolo? So beating him in a very good game? Damn. So then coming out and tying against the Packers. But the Packers aren't the Browns. It's not like we tied with the Packers. We tied with the... Well, it's not like we tied with the Browns. We tied with the Packers. So, again, we, did, we didn't tie to a bad team. We didn't lose to a bad team. We tied against a team that's definitely going to the playoffs. Sh- short of injury. Which Aaron Rodgers might get hurt because no O-line. Next, Eagles. Eagles suffered their first loss. But they're getting Carson Wentz back. So, 6 one half in a dozen, couldn't drop them too far. Because, yeah, they lost, but they're getting Carson Wentz back. The change of quarterback, Baker Mayfield. Oh, we're 3-14 and 14 right now. Oh, we get the Baker Mayfield out there. We win the game. So, change of quarterback could be a huge spark for the Eagles offense. Although, Jay Ajayi... And, uh, what's his other name? The other guy, their other running back are hurt. So they got a third stringer and a fourth stringer out there starting. Oh, let's see who are they playing this week. They are playing... Dun, 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 the Colts. Colts are 1-1. One one. The Eagles are 1-1. One one. Colts have been doing better this year than I expected, but I'm going to say Eagles win. Next... Probably thinking, this team's 2-0. How are they this far? The Broncos. They barely beat the Raiders. They beat the Raiders by one point. Every week, though, obviously they're going to get better. And let's see who they're playing this week. They're playing... Ooh, the Ravens. Ravens crushed the Bills. Then we found out the Bills suck. So crushing the Bills isn't that big a deal. They play the Bungles. They lose to the Bungles. So I'm going to say Broncos win. Case Keenum may not be the spark plug that he was last year with the Vikings, but he doesn't have as much talent around him as he did last year. But the Broncos have that defense, so Broncos win. And then, ah, sad to see him fall this far. But they had a win against the Lions. It's like, yeah, they beat the Lions. The 49ers. They lost against a great team in the Vikings. It's like, I didn't want to drop them too far because... It was the Vikings they lost to. It's not like they lost to the Browns. And then they go out and it's like they beat the Lions and they were they were spanking them. And then like the second half, it's like, oh crap, they're coming back. We won by three. But that's probably just play calling by the coach going, yeah, we got this in the bag. Like, oh, probably shouldn't have played so conservatively. But in the end, they pulled it out. And this week, they have the Chiefs. The Chiefs. Sorry, 49ers, but the way Patrick Mahomes has been lighting it up, Patrick Mahomes is going to win this. As much as I'd love to see the 49ers win, it's going to be the Chiefs. The Chiefs. Then that leaves us with our last team, the Packers. They tied against the Vikings. Like, this is a game I thought the... Yeah, I mean, it's Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, but I thought the Vikings were going to win this. And they should have, except the kicker sucked. Now the Vikings have Dan Bailey, so Dan Bailey's a lot more accurate. He was hurt a bit last year, so then the Cowboys cut him. Stupid move in my opinion, but now the Vikings got him. The Vikings kicker could actually kick the ball. They would have won. Easily. There would have been no overtime. They would have won. <sighs> so I'll just have to wait and see how the Packers do against the Redskins. Oh, hey. Shout out to the Redskins. They spanked the Cardinals. But then the next week, so did the Rams. It's like, okay, so they beat a crap tech or a team. Then they lose in week two. Now week three, do they bounce back? It's Aaron Rodgers. 
But Aaron Rodgers gets hurt. They get Deshaun Kaiser out there. They have to do shotgun every play. The Redskins could win it. This is a 50-50 game in my opinion. And I hate to say it, but it's probably going to be the Packers. But go Redskins, go. Beat the Packers. What do you guys think? Should some of these teams be farther down? Should the Bungles be higher up? Should the Bungles be above the Patriots since the Bungles are undefeated? But they're the Bungles. There's a reason why they're called the Bungles. <sighs> By week nine, they'll be four and four, maybe five and three. That's usually how they do it. But who knows? Maybe this Bungles team will actually get to the playoffs. Lose, but get to the playoffs. We'll have to wait and see. So as always, guys, like, subscribe, Comment down below and have a wonderful day.